Hi, I'm Hilke, and welcome to my Road Machine tutorial series. This video will focus on the add noise, probability, and mimic devices, which can all be found in the filter tab. We will begin with taking a look at the add noise device. It's a funny filter that allows you to add imperfections to your terrain or masks. A good example would be to hook it up to a radio grout, which outputs a beautifully smooth belly-like shape, and is, because of that, the perfect subject for adding imperfections. We immediately see the surface of the radio grout's terrain turns rough, giving it a texture reminiscent of sandpaper. We can also modify the noise added, and in order to do so, let's open up the properties. The noise type parameter lets us choose between the normal noise and additive noise, with the difference being that the normal noise will both create bumps and dents, whereas additive noise will only add bumps to your terrain, which is handy if you do not want craters or holes in your terrain. A pitfall is that this is more prone to clipping. The noise amount parameter goes from 0 to 1, and its value increases exponentially. At 0, no noise is added, and at 1, the maximum amount of noise is added, which varies depending on the Adjust by Skill checkbox. This checkbox is checked by default, and the height of the noise will scale along with the world's maximum dimension. For an 8x8 km world, this means the maximum height is about a quarter of the world's height, whereas for a 16x16 km world, the maximum height of the noise is about a half of the world's height. When left unchecked, the maximum height of the noise will always be a half of the world's height. I recommend leaving it unchecked, as the device will have a more predictable behavior. The seed parameter allows you to set the seed to a desired value, whereas the randomize seed button will randomize its value. The add noise device is a neat and simple device to give your terrain some more roughness, though it may not be the most interesting noise you've ever seen. The probability device may look like the add noise device, but is under the hood a totally different device. As its name suggests, this device revolves around probability, and for those unfamiliar with probability, it's the chance or likelihood for something to happen. And for the probability device, it means the chance for a pixel to be black or white. When the probability is 25%, we expect that out of every 4 pixels, one turns out white, whilst the other 3 are black. The probability is determined by the input, where black or 0 meters means 0% 0 chance, and white or full world height means a 100% chance. This is really well illustrated when we hook up a constant. At first we see an almost black output. This is because the constant device height value is set to a zero meters. When we increase the value, we see white specks appear gradually becoming more and more, and when we approach the world's maximum height, only a few black spots are left, till there are none to be seen. Now, this is a bit boring of course, and it's more interesting when you hook it up to a noise generator, like the basic noise device. We now clearly see parts with low and high probability. This is useful, for example, when you want to create textures or simulate vegetation and forests. The properties of the probability device are quite straightforward. The probability type at the moment only has one option, being uniform, which will uniformly distribute the points over the area. The bias parameter is interesting as it allows you to favor black or white pixels. It's like creating a weighted dice. It is set to 0.5 by default, meaning there is no bias. When the value gets close to 0, the black pixels are favored, and when the value gets closer to 1, the white pixels are favored. The strength parameter gives you control over the maximum probability, so to say. At 1, the maximum probability is 1, meaning that when an input has a spot of max world height, or max value, the probability on that spot is 1. When decreasing the strength value, the maximum probability decreases as well, and that spot at max world height is no longer guaranteed to turn into a white pixel. The probability device comes in handy when you want a source of randomness based on a mask and allows you for intricate texturing or simulation of random events. The final device on the list, the Mimic device, 
is a very niche but funny to use device. It takes in two height fields and tries to apply the characteristics of the second height field to the first height field. Kind of like how the equalizer device can redistribute a terrain's height features according to a histogram input. The device has two ports, one being terrain to modify and the other is named reference input. Before taking a look at its properties, let's hook up a basic noise and a Voronoi to those inputs. We already see our terrain has changed drastically. Both the height and overall roughness is different from the original terrain. When we open the parameters we see three sliders and those give us control over the terrain manipulations. The match elevations parameter determines how much the terrain will follow the elevation curve of the reference terrain. It's as if you were to use the curves device, but instead of drawing your curve manually, it is now based on the reference terrain. By default, it is set to 1, meaning the mimic device will fully adapt the elevation curve and when set to 0, no elevation matching is performed. The match roughness parameter is quite a strange parameter and can lead to strange and extraordinary results. For example, if we now were to set the Forano style to cellular F1, we get intense spikes all over the terrain. This is because the overall roughness of this terrain is very intense due to the stark height difference between the cells. The roughness of the input terrain is then amplified, resulting in this insane output. The detail fidelity parameter determines the level of detail the device will try to apply to your terrain. When set to a low value, only large changes will be applied, and fine details will be lost in translation. Whereas when set to a high value, the device tries to copy even the tiniest features. The Mimic device is a special one and not often used, but can lead to interesting and unique results, so definitely worth a try every now and then. And that concludes it for this episode. See ya!